Star sightings are a dime a dozen in places like New York, L.A., and London. But the only place to find out what your favorite celebrities are thinking and wearing is right here in our brand new segment, On the Carpet. Hey, Bruce Willis and Tracy Morgan were among some recognizable faces at the New York cop-out premiere, talking to us about the comedy, the stunts, and advice from Bruce on being a good action hero. Now that is what I'm talking about. It's so hard to take it all so seriously. The world is such a serious place already, isn't it? Who cares? We want to laugh. We want to get out there and have some fun, live it up. The crew kept us pretty safe. We did some uh, action and some stunts, but for the most part, they didn't... I didn't jump off a bridge. If that's what you want to know, no. With a different spin on honoring shows and films, the Movie Guide Value Awards put the focus on family-friendly content, a quality these attendees feel is lacking. You know, especially in this economy, I think families want to go out and do things together, and they don't want to be split up. Personally, I like the movies that inspire me, that uplift me, that, that speak to hope that um, deal with the human condition, um, those are kind of my movies. I, I, I like to be moved. I am looking for projects that somehow speak to the human condition and illuminate the human condition in whatever form, whatever form it may take. And mad for Johnny Depp, fans waited hours in the rain just to get a glimpse of the Hatter himself at the star-studded London premiere of Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland. It was kind of perfect marriage between the perfect surrealist book and, and Tim Burton's incredibly surrealist uh, vision. Uh, and the marriage of the two, I think, um, was just magnificent. It just seemed like 3D and Alice seemed to fit. You know, there's something about the trippiness of of the Alice world in 3D just helps you bring you into that kind of spacey place. So I, I was very excited about that. You feel like it perhaps you can touch it and it'll be really wondrous. And also for adults who've kind of maybe forgotten how to imagine, you know, we'll, we'll go back to hopefully childhood. You know, I think it'll be, it'll be amazing, I think. It's impossible. And if you believe it is. And speaking of nerves, Oscar's biggest night is right around the corner, and the female nominees have the added pressure of picking the perfect gown to be seen by millions as they strut their stuff down Oscar's fabled red carpet. At Sunday's Oscar luncheon, the nominees got a taste of what lies ahead come Oscar night when they walk down the red carpet in front of the world. And with just three weeks left to decide what to wear, the ladies are already in the planning stages. Who am I wearing? Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me strike a pose. Hold on a second. Ask your question. Oh, Mr. Do I look yeah, good? Do my hips are small? I haven't thought about I mean, I have thought about it. You know, I've got, like, dream dresses in my head, but I don't know who will make them. Um, hopefully someone good. My stomach's hurting over it a little bit. I'm a little scared. I haven't even started looking at color or anything like that. I got a, a bunch of sketches through emails, but and I said that I looked at them, but I lied. <laughs> Today was the first time I actually saw one dress. And then looked at some sketches. Best Supporting Actress nominee Maggie Gyllenhaal is staying on theme come Oscar night. It's a vintage Yves Saint Laurent dress that uh, I think, actually, I was trying to figure out why I liked it. I think it's probably made around when I was born. <laughs> so maybe, it, and it's kind of 70s, like the, like the movie, like Crazy Heart. And leave it to Sandra Bullock to stay cool in the face of fashion emergency. Look, if I have to wear a, a trash bag, I'll belt it with rhinestones and I'll make it work, but... Um, I, I'm, t I'm not panicking for some reason, I think, because there's so many beautiful things out there. Someone will not want to wear something, and I'll get it. But there's one that's <laughs> exquisite <laughs> that, I, that I saw that's just a, a work of art. And, and um, so one. one. Oh, let's see how they all turn out on the Oscar red carpet next month. The biggest show on television continues to dominate the ratings. And this week, the country was introduced to the brand new American Idol Top 24. We know they can sing, so we decided to dig a little deeper, only on Fox. They may not look too stressed, but the Idol Top 24 are in for the fight of their lives, trying to convince America to vote for them week after week after week. Take me the way I Talent is important, but song choice and personality go a long way, too. But we wanted to go beyond what everyone will see on the stage to find out what they're like out of the spotlight. I definitely love to shop. I'm an accessories junkie. So like rings, necklaces, bracelets, scarves, 
jewelry, that's my thing. I'm a dork. I'm a total dork. I have the Fran Drescher laugh. Whenever I laugh really hard, I go like, eh, eh, eh. It's really embarrassing. I can flare my nostrils. Not too quirky, not quirky enough. I don't know how surprising it is, but I do bench 505. I spend a ton of time in the gym. Uh, I haven't lost an arm wrestling match since I was nine. Um, and I've worn the same deodorant forever. I actually collected... I'm telling you, okay, it's hilarious. In a first for Idol, we found not one, but two contestants who speak gibberish. Some had like to use their hands a lot. I really used to like climbing trees. I mean, it was a, it was a big hobby of mine. You know, anytime I would see a tree, I'd be... I'd be up in like 30 seconds, but uh, I stopped doing that since over the summer I, I shattered both my wrists. Something quirky that I do is like, it may sound dumb, but like I really like to like do walk on my hands, like do handstands. So like I'll just be chilling and stuff and then I'll be like, I, I just get this like instinct. I'm just like, I got to do a handstand. I did do this once at a performance and it was really, really funny. And if Crystal needs to mix things up on the show, there's always this look. Okay, it's kind of funny looking because this thing's right here. Did I win for the weirdest person? Get to know the new Top 24, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights, right here on Fox. This is American Idol. This week's number ones include Fox's American Idol, averaging more than 25 million viewers a night. It still only managed to take the silver medal thanks to the Winter Olympics opening ceremony with 32 million viewers. Welcome to Shutter Island. In theaters, Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio convinced audiences to follow them to Shutter Island, where they scared up an impressive winter weekend total of $41 million. The small step I need to take is a mountain. On the charts, Sade returns at number one with her new CD, Soldier of Love. And Kesha continues to celebrate at the top spot as her single, Tick Tock, is the number one party pop anthem for nine weeks in a row. Carlos Santana has been blending rock and Latin jazz for more than 45 years with almost supernatural success. Now his headlining show in Vegas has the 62-year-old rock legend going full speed on the turntable. Legendary guitarist Carlos Santana celebrates a decade of dancing with fans to his supernatural hits with a remastered re-release of the hit CD. For me, it's never been like American Idol where I need to audition for anybody. So with, with Supernatural, uh, the, the, the deluxe edition, it's more of like an inclusive offering of the first one. It's, it's not like I'm uh, I'm trying to like win a popularity contest hoping to make it better. I don't think like that. They come to uh, Las Vegas to witness Supernatural, uh, and there's people in, in their 50s or 60s or 19-year-olds, male and females, who come from all parts of the world to be part of this. Because, uh, you know, if, if you really want to talk about Santana, was moving the Mexican out of the way, the, the real Santana vortex is about uh, all inclusion, we're all in it together. We don't leave anybody out. He's also rocking the Vegas stage with Supernatural Santana, a trip through the hits, and says his music has always been about bringing everybody together. So I love make, moving the Mexican aside and not getting in my own way and trusting that what we do with Santana is something that uh, very few bands like Bob Marley uh, one Love or John Coltrane, I Love Supreme, or The Beatles, All You Need Is Love. There's very few bands who actually is legit. They, they, play, they play their music and the whole family becomes one breath. You know, so I'm very grateful for that. And just because he's doing a retrospective show, don't get the idea he's done yet. No, I, I have no plans to retire or anything like that. I, I just want to go deeper and higher. <laughs> 